Hello lovelies, welcome back. So you need more ideas for how to begin your narrative. You've come to the right place. This is part two of writing a lead and we're gonna take a look at Little Red Riding Hooks. Uh, these are eight amazing story starter techniques that you can use uh, that are particularly effective with narratives. Uh, so it might be a fictional short story or a personal narrative, but these are great. And I wanna make sure that you know that I did not come up with these. Uh, I got them from a teacher named Dina Harrison from Mendive Middle School. And she's amazing, and I'll give you more about her at the end of the video if you're interested in some of her other resources. Let's get started. First of all, I wanna remind you that a lead is the opening of your essay and that, especially in narratives, you wanna grab readers at the very beginning so that they actually want to read what you have to say. This is also important because you're beginning to create your mood and the tone that you establish at the very beginning is going to color the entire remainder uh, of your essay. So you wanna make sure that you're communicating the feeling that, that you desire. So technique number one, start with a short, effective sentence. So when we say short, we mean four or five words maximum. And I also find that it's helpful if you use a pronoun. Uh, now normally, you know, I've told you don't use pronouns without antecedents. But sometimes when it's the first sentence in your narrative, that can be effective. Um, because when you read for the, uh, a sentence, for example, her hair shown gold, you start wondering, well, who is she? Uh, why is it important that her hair shines gold? And you want to find out more information about her. It's a very short declarative statement. So that's technique number one. Number two, start out with a figure of speech, like a really striking or unique metaphor or a simile. And I'll explain to you why these are so effective after we look at the example. So the example provided to us um, by the teacher is the wolf was a tornado changing the lives of all who crossed his path. Now, this sentence actually cheats a little bit because it explains to you the comparison. Figures of speech are always interesting because they're supposed to be interesting. A figure of speech functions on the principle that you take two things that are not alike at all, or at least that you normally wouldn't think of as being alike, for example, in everyday life, would I think of a wolf and a tornado as being similar? No, no, I would not. So the interest for readers comes from this interesting juxtaposition, this interesting comparison, because they start to wonder, well, how is a wolf like a tornado? And in this particular example, where she's told you in the participial phrase that he changes the lives of all who crossed his path, it makes it clear that somehow the wolf is a destructive force. So it gets you thinking, well, how is he going to change the lives of all the people who cross his path? So that's technique two. Number three, start with an interesting question for the reader to ponder. Again, sometimes this one can be overused and it can seem very cliche, especially if you ask a rhetorical question. Um, but sometimes it can work, especially if you approach it in a creative way. Um, such as foreshadowing something that happens at the end, and then you kind of jump back and tell your story. So the example here does that. Who could have thought that a simple trip to grandma's house could end in tragedy? So instantly you're building suspense because people are like, what tragedy? I want to find out about tragedy because people love tragedy. And they're curious how a tragedy relates to grandma's house, so they should keep reading because they want to answer that question. Technique four, we've learned all about phrases and clauses, and now you wanna put them to work by creating a complex sentence. So complex sentences, especially when they're very descriptive, uh, they can be very effective. So here's an example. Though the road to grandma's house was spooky, Red skipped along with an air of confidence. So this builds suspense because you, you're showing cause and effect. You're showing the relationship between the spooky road and uh, Red's confidence, which seems like a contrast. So complex sentences are good for this because they often show relationships through that subordinating conjunction. So the subordinating conjunction here is though. If you've forgotten what a subordinate clause is or a subordinating conjunction, you should go back 
to our YouTube channel, Channel Nugget, and check out that video on phrases and clauses. Bam. Technique five, start with a riddle. Now, I will caution you with this one. Remember how I said your lead helps to establish your tone and your tone determines your reader's mood? This is probably not a technique that you want to use if you're writing about extremely serious subject matter. Um, so unless you're writing a piece that you intend to have a little bit of humor or to be lighthearted, I would not attempt this. Um, so who has big eyes, big teeth, and is dressed in grandma's clothes? Yes, you guessed it, the big bad wolf. Okay, so this is very clever. Um, it, the riddle relates to a character who's going to be important in the story's action. So you might take that approach with your personal narrative. Uh, riddles can require a substantial amount of creativity from you, but if you come up with a clever one, it can be very effective and readers really respond well to it. Uh, if you come up with something good. Sometimes that takes time, but in general, when it's done well, it's, it's worth it. Moving right along, technique six. Well, that's a fail. Technique six, there we go. Fill in these blanks. Uh, so there's a blank, was the kind of blank, who blank. So this can be used with virtually anything so long as you are writing a narrative that focuses on a particular character. So you could even use this statement in reference to yourself using the pronoun I. Like, I was always the kind of girl who uh, n never knew when to shut up. Okay, that's an example. Um, the, the example in front of you for Little Red Riding Hood says, Little Red was the kind of girl who thought wolves would never bother her. This type of statement is great because it establishes and introduces the main character to your readers. Uh, it does a good job of setting your tone. Um, this example is pretty ominous. Um, you can make yours to be kind of humorous. But it begs the question, well, if she's that kind of girl, then why did she think that? Or why did she do that? And so it starts raising questions about the character that will propel your reader onward into your plot. Ta-da! Technique eight, apparently I can't count, so I guess I skipped it somewhere. I'll add it in for you later. Technique eight is using a string of adjectives. Tall, dark, and with an air of confidence, the woodman entered the house. So tall, dark, and with an air of confidence. I have a series, a string of adjectives. This, I'll be honest, this is not my favorite strategy because in my experience, very few students do this well, but, um, Th this is one way, and it's effective because it's it's descriptive of a character. And again, you're raising questions about, in this example, the woodsman. Well, you want to know who is this tall, dark, uh, confident woodsman, and why is he entering the house? So that is one more option. And before I go, Little Red Riding Hooks. Uh, these come from Dina Harrison from Mendai Middle School. Um, on my webpage, if you click on her face, it will take you to her website, which is dinaharrison.com. She has a lot of really uh, great writing tools um, for both teachers and for students. And this is the copyright notice from the source um, where I receive permission to use the work. Well, that's it for now, lovelies. If you want more ideas and you didn't watch Writing Lead Part 1, definitely check that out. There are six more strategies. Uh, since I can't count and you're missing number seven from this video, I apologize. See Nuggets, even your teachers can make mistakes, so always proofread your work. Uh, you can view the seventh strategy uh, on the PowerPoint file under the writing folder on our Fusion webpage. See me if you have any questions about that seventh strategy. You can also check out writingfix.com and the Story Starter Generator. And those links, again, are available in your PowerPoint. That's all, lovelies. I'll see you in class.